All right. Hey, Marina. Hi. <laughs> um, all right, Caitlin, you said your question was on the test? Yeah. Okay. Um, of course, that's the one thing I don't have open right now. Let me go back to open it up real quick. Um, I'm just going to open up the bamboo paper too. Uh, which number on the test were you uh, wanting to go over? Um, free response number five on the first page. All right. Response. Can you get? Can you see the test right now? No. Oh yeah. Okay. So you said it was free response number five. Yes. Okay. So this. What is the pH of a one point zero molar solution? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to screen share my bamboo paper. Okay. So. Um. In this problem, so this is free response number five. Can you see the bamboo paper now? Yeah. Okay. So what we have here is we're doing the KB of, uh, or we have KB of NH3, and that's equal to 1.8 uh, times 10 to the negative fifth. And they want to know what is the pH. That's our question. Well. To do that, we probably need to get the, we could do it a couple different ways. You could get the H plus, or you could do the POH. And I think given the KB, the easiest way would to go OH minus, um, and then um, I would probably do POH and subtract 14, but you could also do the, well, let me just show you. All right, we know that KB is equal to the products over the reactants, and the products are NH4 plus, times OH minus over NH3. Now, the reason I knew that is because NH3 plus water yields NH4 plus plus OH minus. So, and that's how we ended up getting these up here, okay? Um, so then we have, and, and we know that when it dissociates, it always dissociates equally. So 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to X squared over the concentration of the NH3, and it said it was a 1.0 molar solution. So then um, all we've got to do is solve for X because that's going to be the same. So X is going to be equal to the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is going to be equal to, let me pull up my handy dandy calculator. So then for that one, let's see, I get uh, 4.2 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, three molarity and that's the also the concentration of the OH minus. Okay? So you with me so far? Yeah. 
All right, once we have that, 4.2 times 10 to the negative three, that's equal to the OH minus. You can solve it, you can solve for POH, and then take 14 minus the POH to get the pH. Or you can say, um, if you remember, uh, uh, let me, I'm gonna start with the other one first. Um, H plus times OH minus is equal to one times 10 to the negative 14. Does that look like a four? Not really, does it? Okay, so you can do it either way. I kind of prefer this way, um, but it could be shorter going this way. So POH is equal to negative log of the OH minus concentration. I'm not writing well. I normally don't write well, but this is awful. Uh, so that's negative log of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 3. So, and for that, I end up getting 2.37. That's my POH, and if we want to do this one, then 14 minus 2.37. I can't do that in my head very quickly. Uh, basically, we're just going to call that 11.6. Uh, so there's your answer. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, do we have any typed questions? Well, we don't have very many people. All right, so uh, Chloe or Marina, do you guys have any questions you'd like to hear right now? Multiple choice number six. All right, let's go back to that test. All right, so. Number six says commercial vinegar was titrated with sodium hydroxide solution to determine the content of acetic acid, HC2, H3O2. For 20 milliliters of the vinegar, 32 milliliters of 0.5 molar NaOH solution was required. What was the concentration of acetic acid in the vinegar if no other acid was present? Okay, so this looks like a, uh, a titration equation that MAVA equals MBVB. So if I pull that up on my bamboo paper, all right. Welcome, Amanda. All right, so this is multiple choice number six. Uh, I'm going to guess that the MAVA equals. MBVB, and the, the acetic acid is just a 1H, and the sodium hydroxide is just 1OH, which makes it kind of easy. And we're looking for just the molarity of the acid. So we know that MA is going to be equal to MBVB over VA. So the molarity of the base was 0 0.500 molar. The volume of the base was zero, oops, zero point uh, zero three two liters. And the volume of the acid was zero point zero two zero zero um, liters. So this should give me the right answer. Cross our fingers. Two divided by, and the answer, according to my calculations, the molarity of the acid should be uh, 0 0.800 molarity, and it is. It's uh, it's B. It's choice B. 
Um, so when you get the titration, okay, uh, that's what happened. You can use that MAV equals MBBB. So, all right, good, Marina. Now, so Chloe, number 2C on the back side. So let's go look at that one together. All right, 2C. Oh, that one's a gnarly one. What is the ratio of concentration of the pro propanoate ion to that of the propanoic acid in a buffer solution with a pH of 5.20? So maybe I'll just leave this one up. Uh, you can see that um, the because it's a buffer, they say it's a buffer, you, you know that you can use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. pH equals pKa plus log of base over acid. Um, it tells you the pH, which is 5.20. Because this is a continuation of the problem above where they gave us the Ka of the propanoic acid, you can take the pKa of that 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth, so you just do um, negative log of that number, and that will give you the 4.89. So what you end up with is the 5.2. Uh, the 5.2, you subtract the 4.89, um, so then you get the 0.31. So then you have 0.31 is equal to log of the ion over the acid. And so when you want to eliminate the log, if you're trying to find this number right here, you just do 10 to the negative 0.31. Let me just double check. I'm pretty sure that's right. 10 to the negative 0.31. Um, oh, wait, that's if you do negative log. Whoops, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. You don't do negative. Oh, what happened? It closed on me. Let me try that again. That's it. I apologize. Let me go back and open that up. Oh, wow. It's opened up all kinds of things on me. Um, okay. Let me try this again. Share. That's a base unit test, touch screen share. Okay, so we're back here. Um, so, I'm sorry, you don't do negative. So, uh, is this? So, if I want to do this, I would do uh, this right here. Oh, it did to me, it's going to shut down. Oh, I'm going to be irritated. Let's do it like this then. The ion over the acid. This is a ratio right here. The ion over the acid is equal to. 10 to the point, uh, the, to the 0 0.31 power. Doesn't look like it yet. Let me work some magic here. There we go. So 10 to the 0 0.31 power. Um, I'm sorry, the negative, I threw that in there. That meant I forgot that was for the, when you do pH is equal to negative log of the concentration of the H plus. If you, you have the pH and you're looking for the H plus concentration, you have to put that negative somewhere. But this one you don't. You just do 10 to the 0 0.31. That's how you handle that situation. Um, does that make sense to you, Chloe? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. It closed on me again. I'm so irritated. All right. We'll go ahead and ask another question while I fix my situation here. Anybody can uh, ask a question if they would like. No questions right now? Oh, go ahead. Can you do D, like the next part of that problem? Sure. Um, and then I'll come back and do, okay, a couple more questions on multiple choice. I will do that. All right, so let's do on the D part. Um, and I'll try not to click on things on the test. All right, D, you have a 100 milliliter sample of a different buffer solution. The propanoic acid concentration is 0.35 and the sodium propanoate concentration is 0.50 molar. 
To this buffer solution, 0.0040 mole of solid NaOH is added. Calculate the pH of the resulting solution. Okay, so um, we have a buffer and we have a change in the buffer, so we know that we can continue to use the Henderson Hasselbach equation. Um, the reason that they made it a solid is that they were going to tell you that that volume is the volume change is negligible, like it's not enough to make a difference. So all you've done is change the number of moles. It's still the same uh, volume. So if that's the case, if you look at the bottom of the key, can you see the bottom of the key down there? The yeah. or okay. What you've done is that you have added base. And when you add base, you have this pH equals pKa plus log of the base over the acid. You add base to whatever the concentration is, and it's 0 0.50 molar. Now, it doesn't matter what the volume is. If they say it's 0 0.50 molar, it's 0 0.50 molar regardless of that. And they give you 0.35 molar, so it's it, you don't have to divide those by 0 0.1 liters because they're already the concentration. Okay. So that means that it's 0.5 as the base, because that's with the propanoate, that's its ion, its conjugate base, over the acid, which is the 0.35. So it's adding the 0 0.0. Okay, now here's where it gets a little tricky because now you do have to divide it by the volume because they gave you the number of moles of this. So 0 0.004 divided by 0 0.1 is 0 0.04. So now that they've added 0 0.04 base, it goes from 0.5 molar to 0.54 molar. And the acid goes from being 0.35 to 0.31 because four of the 0 0.04 of the acid has been basically converted to base. So the acid lost it, the base gained it. And so now you can plug it in here you have the same pKa, which you calculated from, um, I think, section C. And so pH is equal to 4.89 plus log of 0.54 over 0.31. And that'll give you the new pH. Oh, Chloe can't see. Uh, how's that, Chloe? Is that better? I think I've got it on 200% now. I, maybe just come to the screen. It doesn't work out real well. I think that's, oh well, I think it's zoomed in more. Okay, so um, Caitlin, does that make sense on D? I think so, yeah. Okay, so whenever you have a buffer system in existence and you add, and it's adding, it's only ever adding a strong acid or adding a strong base. Once you do that to the buffer system, it's going to, so if you add the strong base, it's going to add whatever the, add to whatever the base is and take away from the acid and, and equal amounts. They have to change. So many people, I don't know about you, but many people changed one of the one of the parts of the fraction, but not the other. Maybe they changed the 0.54 because they're like, oh, base was added, but they didn't change the acid. The base reacts, the strong acid or base reacts immediately with its opposite. So, so if you add the strong base, it adds to the base, takes away from the acid. If you add the strong acid, takes away from the base and adds to the acid. Okay. Okay. So now we go back, we've got multiple choice number five, uh, and then we'll, we'll go back, I see that, multiple choice number 13, free response 2B, and multiple choice 10 and 11. So number five, okay. So we've got undergoes hydrolysis in water solution to produce a basic solution. So I'm gonna go back to my um, bamboo paper. And um, so the hydrolysis of water means it's something plus water, and then it's going to give you two things. And it's and it said to produce a basic solution, which means you've got to end up with an OH minus. So in this situation, you want something that's going to be able to take on another H. It needs to pick up another H. The only one that can pick up another H is the NaHCO3 because really that ends up being Na plus plus HCO3 minus. You need that minus because it's got to be able to pick up the H. It's the only one that can do that of those of those choices. So if I do that, 
That's how I get the H2CO3 plus OH minus. And there's still a sodium ion hanging around, but it's a spectator ion. And so both of those go away, leaving you with this equation. So when they say the hydrolysis of water, that means that water's gonna split up and is it gonna pick up the H or is it gonna pick up the OH? So does that make sense, Marina? Yes, maybe. Oh, I hope so. I did not see anything typing, but I'm gonna, oh yes, okay, good. All right, let's go on to multiple choice number 13. Um, back to the test. 13, all right. Uh, why do you multiply by two on the denominator? Okay, so we we recognize that H2SO4 is diprotic. It has more than one H. Um, and I have to be honest with you, every time I try to explain this, I think I do it wrong. Let's see if I can do it right this time. Um, I'm going to open up my bamboo paper and see if this works or not if it works, it'll work, but do I do it right? That's the whole question, right? Okay, <clears throat> so this is multiple choice number 13. Okay, so we've got NaOH uh, being titrated to H2SO4, and we wanna find the molarity of the H2SO4. So we're gonna use that MaVa equals Mb, VB, and we have, we have the, we want to know MA. All right, so we have the MA is equal to MB, VB, oops, VB over VA, which is equal to the molarity of the base, which is 0.125 molarity and the volume of the base which is uh, the 27.8 minus the 1.4 right so that's what that 20 oh uh, 0 0.0264 okay divided by the volume of the acid which was 0 0.025 liters. These are both liters. Okay. And that's going to equal all molarity of the acid. So if we remember, this is basically, let me get a different color here for a second. This is going to be, these are the H pluses and these are the OH minuses. Okay. So when this is done, it'll give us the concentration of the H plus. So this is the H plus is equal to this value over here, 0 0.125 molarity, 0 0.0264 liters over 0 0.025 liters. But we don't want to know the molarity of the H plus. We want to know the molarity of the H2SO4. So once we get that, we need to... Um, I think we need to divide it by two. So if we do that, then I would expect, or I would think that you would have to multiply by two. So let's see. And that is not what the key says. That is interesting. I would have chosen A. How about that? Um, 0.0264 to the volume. Hmm. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, see, I probably did it wrong again. I think that
Okay. I was doing the, I think I did the math when I did that one. Um, the, I'm sorry, I was doing all the math on this side and then I switched to doing the math on the other side. I should have kept doing the math on this side. And you divide it by two. Because this is the value. This isn't the value. This is the value. This is the variable. This is the value. So that's why you divide by two. So once you get that number, you take that number and divide it by two. See, I did it wrong again. Look at that. Okay, but that's that's why the two is on the bottom. So does that make sense, Chloe? Why? Because you don't you you can't do it to the variable again. You gotta keep doing the math on the one side. So that's why it's divided by two. Obviously, uh a little bit more confusing, but um, when you would get that answer, you would end up dividing it by two, right? Does that make sense? So that's what they did. They just divided it by two. Wish I had done that right in the first place. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've got Chloe a little bit better and maybe a little with some time. <laughs> you can always ask me tomorrow morning before school if you want to talk about it again. Okay, free response to B. Free response to B. Let's go to the test again. Uh, okay, oh, it's gonna shut down on me again. I accidentally clicked on a formula. Oh, well, we'll see how much we can get through before it does it. All right, the percentage. So, Amanda, you needed to get the amount of H plus from uh, from the um, from the problem above or from A, and you calculated the hydrogen ion concentration in the 0.2 molar. So that's where you use the the Ka. So x squared over the concentration equals the Ka. Um, you found x, and that gave you the H plus concentration. That is the amount that dissociated from the C2 from the propanoic acid, which means that all you have to do is divide the 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 concentration of the hydrogen ion divided by the molarity of the acid the original molarity of the acid times 100 so that's all they were looking for it might have felt kind of confusing but um once you get that h plus concentration or the oh minus concentration whatever it is and divide it by the original concentration that's it that's all you have to do you'll probably have to do that on the test tomorrow morning as well so um, did that make sense to you, Amanda? Thanks. Okay. So um, I'm very sorry. It, uh, it did shut down on me again. All right. So now we're going on to multiple choice numbers 10 and 11. Okay. The equilibrium constant for the reaction represented by the equation above is greater than 1. Which of the following gives the correct relative strengths of the acids and bases in the reaction? So um, you have two acids and you have two bases. Uh, you know that H2PO4 minus is an acid because when you move to its conjugate, it gives up an H. And you know that H2BO3 minus is the acid because if it moves to the other side, it also gives up an H. So fortunately, well, I mean, it compares just those ones right there. Um, it says that the, the equilibrium constant is greater than one, and the equilibrium constant is determined by products over reactants. So products over reactants means that the, the two products are in greater concentration than our two reactants, which means we, it wants to shift to the right. The reaction wants to go to the right, which means that H2PO4- minus, as an acid wants to go to HPO4-2-, minus. okay? If it wants to go to the right, that means H2BO3- minus doesn't want to go to the left. It wants to stay on the right, which means that H2PO4- minus is going to be stronger than H2BO3-. minus. So you look for those options. And it looks like the only two options for that are A and C. Okay, so now we've narrowed it down to two. Now we need to look at which is a stronger base. 
we've got HBO3 2 minus or HPO4 2 minus. Again, if it's strong, it wants to go the other side. If it wants to be on the right hand side, that means that HBO3 2 minus would be stronger because it wants to go to the right, whereas HPO4 2, 2 minus doesn't want as strong to, it wants to stay on the right, it doesn't want to go left. So that means it's weaker than the HBO3 2 minus. So you find the one where HBO3 2 minus is stronger than the HBO4 2 minus. And they both line up, so that's A. Um, so that is number 10. Marina, does that make sense on number 10? Yes, okay. Number 11. Okay, this one is oh so much fun because it's math without a calculator. So I'm gonna open up my bamboo tablet. All right, and let's go to the next page. All right, so this is multiple choice number 11. And uh, we have a, we have a ionization constant Ka. So Ka is equal to, in this case, it's H plus times A minus divided by HA. And, um, oops. So what we don't have is we really need to, we need to find this H plus value. So if the pH is equal to 3.00, then, and that's equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration. The trick here is to know that a pH of one, if the pH is one, that means that the H plus concentration is equal to 0 0.1. If it's two, then it's equal to 0 0.01. If it's three, then it's equal to 0 0.001. So we have a pH of three. So what that means is that we have, uh, and remember that when this dissociates, it dissociates equally between the H plus and the A, A minus. So now we have a Ka that's equal to uh, 0 0.001 times 0 0.001 all divided by uh, the molarity, which was 0 0.20. So that's equal to one times 10 to the negative sixth divided by 0 0.2. And one divided by 0 0.2 is really equal to five times 10 to the negative sixth. So we look at the key and that answer is yes, it is C. All right, so that's how you would do that one without a calculator. Not very much fun, but... Oh, Amanda, I'm so sorry. Did you end up seeing it? I did just saw your comment. You saw it, Amanda? No, I can't see the last part. Okay. Um, let me... Uh, oh, I guess moving around my screen doesn't matter as much. It doesn't. The last part of the test or the last part of the problem or the solution I was working on? I guess that's part of the solution. All right, let me see if, I don't know how to do that. I'll put this down. Oh, no, that's not it. Okay, well, what I'll do is rewrite it, I guess, at the top. Uh, I don't know why it's cutting off for you. So we had um, 0 0.001 times 0 0.001 all over, oh, the faces at the bottom, I got you. 0 0.2, um, 0, so that's 1 times 10 to the negative 6th over 0 0.2. And then um, the 1 divided by 0.2 one divided by 0 0.2 is equal to five, and that's times 10, you can keep the times 10 to the negative sixth. So that, that's the C answer. Okay. Caitlin is suggesting zoom out. Okay, okay, good, all right. So now 
we did um, 10 and 11, and then... Da, 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 da. Oh, did we get them all so far? Good. Are there, there are more questions? Oh, I have one question about multiple choice number nine. Number nine, okay. Let's look at that one. I don't under I don't know how is it just like memorizing what are acids and what are? Yeah, well, yes and no. Um so the bronsted acids means that they can donate an H plus. Right. And a bronsted base means it can accept an H plus. So you need a you need a um compound that has one H, at least one H that it can give up but that it has room to accept more H's. So in A, there has there's an H, HCO3 minus, and the minuses are really helpful because they kind of tell you where to go a little bit, but that means that it can accept an H plus. If it has a minus, it can accept an H plus. And it has an H, so it can give up that H. So A is definitely in. B is definitely in. It's got the minus, meaning it can accept another H plus. It has two H's, so it can definitely give up an H. C, we'll come back to because that's the answer. D, H2O, if you add an H, it becomes H3O+, plus, which is the hydronium ion. It can give up an H, and it becomes OH-. minus. Um, so that D is also qualifies. And then NH4+, plus. if there's a plus on there, you cannot add another H. It's done. The plus is, is more than what it can, can do. So no H is going to be added to that. So that's why C cannot be the um cannot be a bronsted acid and a bronsted base it's the exception there okay all right um if i could offer a piece of advice see this right here the buffer at a ph of less than six that question number two there's going to be a couple questions like that on the multiple choice so being able to recognize that your pair of solutions are a buffer, and then if it's a buffer, which way is the pH going to go? So is it gonna be a weak acid and it's salt or conjugate acid, a weak acid, I'm sorry, it's conjugate base. So the weak acid in its conjugate base is going to be acidic, so it's, got, it's gonna be a buffer with a pH less than seven or less than six. If it's going to be a, um, oh, I'm sorry, Oh, this was the one that it was wrong. Wasn't this the one that was wrong? <laughs> yeah, it's a pH of less than six instead of, or greater than six instead of less than six. Right. But it was only okay. buffers. So. Okay, right. That's true. Okay, so I'm sorry. Let me change that real quick. So A is the right answer because it's a buffer that's greater than seven or greater than six. If it had been um, a question about, uh, then a buffer that's less than seven or six would be a weak acid and it's conjugate base. So, and acetic acid is the very popular one to put in there. So I would offer up that some, um, suggestion. I would also offer up, oh, and so knowing, um, and there'll be other questions like, see this one in number one, the most nearly neutral solution? It doesn't say anything about a buffer. So you're probably going to ignore the buffers and look for the solutions that are neutral or acidic or basic. So like B right here, it's an acid and a salt. It's going to be very acidic. So if it says, hey, which one is a, is a low pH or the most acidic? You would say, oh, that's definitely B. Um, if it said, which one is the most basic? You would say, oh, that's got to be C because it's sodium hydroxide, a strong base and a weak base together. It's most definitely basic. And then the most neutral one, obviously, was D, and that was number one. You guys got that one. Um, another suggestion I would offer up is identifying the strength of the acid. Um, oh, Chloe, the be there for the retake, 6.30. Yes, I would suggest 6.30. Definitely be there at 6.30. Okay. Um, let me... Strength of acid. I'm going to put some stuff on the bamboo paper. Okay. So... Strength 
I'm spelling it wrong, I'm sure. Strength by now I'm irritated. Let me start that one again. Strength. Doesn't look right. Is that how you spell strength? I think so. Okay. Uh, let's go with that. Strength of acid. So one way to determine them is uh, because you'll have some acids that uh, look like this, like HClO4. That's perchloric acid. That is a strong acid. And then it gets weaker, HClO3, HClO2, HClO, because the fewer oxygens they are, fewer oxygens there are, the, the weaker it is. Weak, strong. Okay, so um, you have an H attached to a central atom, and then the more oxygens there are on the outside, the stronger the acid. Sometimes the other one you'll see is you could end up seeing, um, you would see HO, let's say HOI, HOBR, HOCL, okay? So now you have a situation in which um, now they're attached to the oxygen in the center and um, they are, you have a, an electronegative element on the other side of the oxygen. So the more strongly the electrons are pulled towards the element, so the more the stronger it is, then the, the easier it is for the H to pop off. So of these three, HC, um, I mean, CL is the more electronegative element. So in this case, HOCL is stronger and the HOI is weaker. Now, in general, in general, these acids are like medium anyhow. Like they're, they're not as strong. The, the, the ones with the oxygen on the outside, those ones are stronger, right? Because we're, we're looking at, I mean, if this is a strong acid, this is a strong acid, HNO3, this is a strong acid, H2SO4. And you can see already that, that there's a central atom with oxygens on the outside that make it a strong. So those ones are stronger. So something with a, um, like that is stronger than these ones with oxygen as a central atom. And the more oxygens you have, the stronger the acid. More oxygen equals stronger. Okay. Um, let's see if any other suggestions I can throw out there. Do you guys remember your being able to do your conjugates? Um, let me. So if you're comparing, uh, you're looking for. Uh, I don't know. If, do we have one like this? On that? I was looking for like the conjugates. Let me go back. Let me go back to the test. Okay. Oh, so can you guys see number seven? That one is similar. There'll be something like that. Same thing. Oh, that's an oxidized, but the same idea that, that you have strong, you pick a stronger acid. Oh, but this one is, which can be oxidized. Oh, this question, there won't be a question exactly like this. The answer was uh, D because that, that central atom could take one more oxygen. The other three were already maxed out on oxygens. Okay. I don't think there's a question like uh, like this on this test. Okay, let's go back to the bamboo paper. Um, I wonder if there's one like it on the practice test. Um, 
Huh. Not directly. Okay, well let's just do this. Okay, so I'm gonna use some acids and bases and some you know conjugates that you are that you are familiar with. Um, if I use this, okay, so NaCl, and I do um, NaC2H3O2, and we do. Um, Uh, NAF. And then on this side we do we can do AL um, uh, Oh, I'm kind of blanking right now. Let me think. Well, let's do ALBR. A BR3. And then we could do NH4Cl. Um, and um, Li. Hmm. I'm trying to be clever. I'm running out of clever things to do. NO3. Okay, so if you look at these, if I said um, highest pH, lowest pH, or something like that, maybe not highest or lowest, let's just do high or low. So when you look at these, when they break up and you get, you, you have to take it, you have to, to look at the to look at the compound and you have to break it up. It becomes Na plus, which means it's gonna be attached to an OH minus, okay? So now OH, NaOH is a strong base, which means that the Na is not going to contribute to pH. So we don't worry about Na. Cl, if I put Cl minus here, it attaches to an H plus. There's always attaching to an H plus or an OH minus. So this is a strong acid. So its conjugate does not contribute to pH. So this one is really neutral. I should put another category over here for neutral. So NaCl is neutral. Okay. Then we look at NaC2H3O2. Well, we just did NaOH, so you know that Na does not contribute. The C2H3O2 is a minus, so it attaches, uh, it attaches to an H plus. Well, HC2H3O2 is acetic acid, all right? which means that that is a weak acid and this is the conjugate base. This is a conjugate base which makes the pH high, okay, or higher. So that means that this is going to have a high pH. Did you guys follow what I just did there with that compound? Is that like the same thing as adding water to it and then looking at the products? It's exactly the same thing. Okay. Exactly the same thing. Okay. So then we look at NaF. We've just talked about Na. Again, Na does not contribute whatsoever. So we're looking at F. F minus. It will end up matching with an H plus. Um, and if it makes it easier to do that, we know that F minus plus H2O will end up giving us HF plus OH minus. So again, it's the conjugate base. It's going to make it basic. So NaF is also a low pH, or I'm sorry, a high pH. It's a high pH because it's a base, okay? AlBr3, um, the Br 
is going to end up attaching to, it's a Br minus, ends up attaching to an H plus, okay? So if I do that one, I'm gonna do it up here. The Br minus plus H2O gives us HBr plus, um, am I doing this one right? Right, it'll, oh, plus OH minus. Okay, so, but, but the point is, okay, the point is it, it actually won't because um, this is dissociated. This H plus is, is back out in there forming the water again because HBr is a strong acid. So Br does not contribute to the pH. It is a, um, it's neutral. Oh, but we need to do Al. So now we have Al um, plus the OH minus. So Al, which is a three plus, which doesn't really matter, plus H2O is going to give us Al, a metal is gonna combine with the OH minus three plus H plus. Okay, so this is a weak base. It's not one of our six strong bases. So it's automatically a weak base. A metal plus a hydroxide like that is a weak base, um, unless it's one of the six I already gave you. So that means that this is the, the Al is the conjugate acid, okay? And it produces H plus. So that means it's gonna have a low pH. So, oops, I should write it wrong. Al, um, Br3 is going to have a low pH. Um, what do you think is going to happen with NH4Cl? Anybody? So what... Uh, would NH4 lose one of its H's? Yes. So there would be NH3 and then HCO? Um, if I do the NH4, it's a plus, plus H2O, I'm going to get NH3 plus H3O plus. So... Oh, if you have to add it individually to the... Separate ions. Right, you have to do each one separately. Okay. So that means is NH4 plus a conjugate acid or a conjugate base? Um, what did it produce? Conjugate acid. Right, conjugate acid. And then we look at Cl and we look back at what we did before. It's part of a strong acid, so it's not going to contribute to pH at all. So is this going to end up with a low pH or a high pH? Low pH. Good. And then LiNO3, what do you think will happen there? So the Li, is that the metal plus hydroxide, which is a weak base? Except for that it's one of our six. Okay. It's one of the six, like that little tetra symbol that like on the periodic table, there's, oops, there's um, three that come down and then it moves over and then three more go down. So this is the alkali metals and this is the alkali earth metals. So it's lithium, lithium, sodium, potassium. And then it moves over to, um, what is it? Calcium, strontium, and it always helps to look at a periodic table. Barium. Okay, Calcium. so then that would be neutral then, that part. Exactly. And then... So that's not going to contribute at all. And then the NO3. Um, a conjugate base. It, it it would be, except for that it's a part of HNO3, 
which is one of our six strong acids. So it's neutral too, so the whole thing's neutral. That's right. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It, it's, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. I'll, I'll give you that. All right. Just something to think about. Maybe come back to. I think it's only like one multiple choice. but All right. So we have a couple more questions. We have number 12 on the multiple choice and number three. So I will go back to those. On the test, 12. All right. So the... So we're looking at the lab question in the multiple choice. So as this reaction proceeds, the concentration of Na plus in the reaction mixture is what will happen to it. Um, so let's, oh, because it was comparing Na plus and the SO4 to minus, okay. So this, okay, I can understand why this one would be slightly confusing. Let me, um, all right, let's open up. I'm gonna go back to the, to the bamboo paper for a second. All right. So what you have here is you have you have your beaker and you have it, you know, your drops are coming in. And this is the acid. So when the acid's in here, you get a ton of the H pluses floating around, but you also have HSO4 minus floating around. And these are dropping in Na pluses and OH minuses are coming in with this, okay? So as they get added, I should make them a different color. That's what I should do. So the Na pluses go in and they just start building up, which makes sense. I think everyone would agree that makes sense. And it, those are going in like that. The OH minuses go in and they combine with the H pluses and you get an H2O. So you get a lot of those, oops, H2Os. But the OH is also strip off the H off the HSO4 minus. So you end up getting more H2O, but you also get the SO4 to minus. So that one's increasing now too. Because you're getting so many more waters being and it's pulling off these H's. Okay. So um, the, while it's a strong acid, it loses that first H really fast. For calculation purposes, we say they both come off. For our calculation purposes, we say they both come off. Conceptually, the second H doesn't come off as quickly or as easily for the H2SO4. And that piece of information you probably were missing. Does that make sense, Chloe? Yeah. All right. Well, let's go on to number three. Um, amphiprotic in water solution. Amphiprotic means that if it's protic, it's talking about the H. If it's amphi, it means that it can go two different ways. So if it's like an amphibian, water and air. Um, so if it's amphiprotic, it means it can gain or lose an H. And in this situation, you have to look for one of the solutions has to have an H that can come off. So A doesn't have any H's, so that's not even close. B, it's got an H, but when you look at it, it's organic. And so this H is a part of 
an alcohol. When it ends in OH, that's an alcohol. If it's organic and the H can come off, it's going to be written out front, like it is in C. That means it's acetic acid. So good. All right, so C is a possibility. It can give up an H. And then D, here we are again. This is another organic acid, uh, sodium bicarbonate, or, um, well, it's the, it's the conjugate base to carbonic acid with this H. So we know that this can give up an H as well. That's fantastic. So that means we've got one of the two. Now the other one is, can it gain an H? And so um, if we look at that, if we're just looking at these two, we cannot add a second H to this. There is no such thing as H2C2H3O2. It's just one H on the acetic acid. On D, however, an H can take the place of the sodium, making it H2CO3. Um, and so in that case, yes, that makes D the right answer. I just thought of something else too, looking at C, there's no, there's not a negative floating around over here to add another H. Sometimes there's a negative that shows that it can gain another H and there's no negative on that one. So Amanda, does that make sense for number three on the multiple choice? Okay, good. All right, Chloe. <clears throat> yeah, yes, definitely get to sleep. Good night. See you tomorrow morning at 6.30. Uh, you're welcome. Oh, you're welcome, Marina. Oh, you're welcome, Caitlin and Amanda. Excellent. Oh.